Hello again, everybody. This is Rob, the Baseball Time Traveler. Thanks very much for joining me today. As we go back to 1954, and I'm going to show you the cards of the players who participated in Game 1 of the 1954 World Series, otherwise known as the game with Willie Mays and the catch. So we're going to go right to the cards. I want to thank you for joining me again, and let's get to it. But before we hit the uh, cards, I wanted to show you a um, couple of pictures from the 1954 Sports Illustrated that captured Willie Mays' catch. Here's the actual magazine. This is October 11th, 1954, eight days after the, the game. And here, frame by frame, is the catch, which we will see later framed in a baseball card, a 1959 Topps baseball card. All right, let's get to the cards. We're going to start with the Cleveland Indians first, and then go to the Giants. Try and move through these quickly for you, keep you interested, and I'll give you some background as I as I go through some of the players. All right, Al Smith, he started the game off, lead off batter, and he was hit by a pitch by Sal Magley and ended up scoring the first run of the game. Let's try to focus here. There we go. And... Al had the uh, the distinction of, in 1955, actually led the Nash American League in four different categories, including uh, run scored. He scored 119 runs in 1955. Solid ball player for the Cleveland Indians for, for a few years. Next is Bobby Avila, who is the 1954 American League batting champion. Batted 341. And had a very distinguished career, good good player, and he was the first Mexican to play in the Major League Baseball All Star Game. And following his playing days, he became president of the Mexican Baseball League. Next is somebody all of you know, Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, Larry Doby, who was a man of many firsts. He was the first African American player in the American League, and had. I, I just want to relay a quick story on this uh, as I was doing the research on Larry. You know, we, we all know his statistics. He was a great ball player, uh, MVP, all that sort of stuff. But if you saw the movie uh, Jackie, about Jackie Robinson, what was it, 42, and the, the really harsh treatment that Jackie received, not only from opposing ball players as he was integrated into uh, Major League Baseball, Larry Doby faced the same issues, and even his own teammates, several of them, refused to shake his hand when he was, uh, first joined the team. And there was a guy named Joe Gordon, who many of you may recall was a former Yankee, ended up uh, playing for the Cleveland Indians, was a Hall of Famer, inducted into the Hall of Fame posthumously in 2009. But Joe Gordon was the first one to offer to play catch with Larry on that very first day that he reported. And then later there was an incident where in a doubleheader, Larry Doby was assigned to play first base in the second game, and he didn't have a first baseman's glove because he wasn't. He was typically a second baseman or shortstop. So long story short, um, he was unable to get anybody to cooperate uh, to give him a first baseman's glove. But Joe Gordon, behind the scenes, acquired one, and then Larry was able to get that. I thought that was just a shame how, how some of the players just mistreated so many of the uh, early uh, Negro League players, and, and fortunately that has changed uh, dramatically since that time. But I wanted to relay that story because I, you'll see Joe Gordon in a, a future video. I'm going to be featuring him. He played in Lou Gehrig's last game in 1939. Next is Al Rosen, who I think really would have been a Hall of Fame player uh, had his career not been curtailed by serious back and leg injuries. But uh, in 1953, he won the American League MVP, and he was a almost a triple crown winner. He led the league in home runs and RBI and just missed out on the batting title literally on the last day of the year, and he batted 336, had a heck of a year. Next is Vic Wirtz, who is a name that has gone down in baseball history because of his connection to Willie Mays and the catch. Vic uh, actually went four for five in this game, and had he completed that, uh, had, had Willie missed that, that catch, 
he would have gone five for five and that would have set a World Series record. But what would happen with uh, Vic was that he, after his career, he actually posted a uh, photograph, a framed photograph on his business office wall depicting the catch. And he said, you know, in good humor, had he uh, had really missed that ball, uh, Vic would have just gone down as another player in Major League history. But uh, now he's got some notoriety due to his connection to Willie and the catch. And in 1955, uh, Vic wasn't able to complete the season because he contracted polio in uh, August, late August, early September. But he was fortunate uh, to be able to come back. He fought back and in 1956 returned. And I believe he had 32 home runs in one of his best years. Great ball player, four-time All-Star. Next is Mickey Grasso, who was the uh, replacement catcher in the 10th inning. He came in and uh, replaced Mike Hegan. And Mickey had the distinction of uh, being the catcher behind the plate when Dusty Rhodes hit that home run. And Willie Mays, if you might recall, uh, stole second base, which led to uh, Hank Thompson being walked. And that's, that's what gave Dusty Rhodes the opportunity to come up and hit that walk-off home run. But the story behind Mickey is fascinating. He actually uh, fought in World War II and was captured and was a POW for four years in Germany. And towards the end of the war, 1945 in the spring, uh, the war was starting to wind down as the uh, Allied troops were uh, continuing their march on Berlin. And apparently the Germans were moving some of the POWs to another location and Mickey and several of the other POWs uh, escaped. And I wanted to just bring that highlight out because so many of the guys who played in this game served admirably and honorably in World War II. Speaking of that, Dave Philly served as a military policeman, MP, during World War II. And he ha has the, I don't know if it's still a current record, but he did at one point had 13 at-bats in a doubleheader, which at the time was a major league record. Solid ball player. The next one, Dale Mitchell, is a surprise because I, I really didn't know much about Dale Mitchell. And I did a little research on him and found that he actually, between the years 1943 and 1960, only Ted Williams and Stan the Man Musial had a higher career batting average during that 17-year span. So Mitchell was a heck of a heck of a hitter. In fact, um, the statistics are pretty amazing. Uh, his he in almost 4,000 at bats, 3,984 at bats, he um, he only walked or only struck out 119 times, and he had close to 400 walks. So his walk to strikeout ratio was amazing, and I think his career average during that 17-year span I mentioned was 312. Next is George Strickland. Followed by Dave Pope. Dave did not have a 1954 card. He was a rookie. And this is his first card. Recall it from the uh, first video I mentioned that uh, in 1956, the Topps card, they uh, made his attempted catch of the Dusty Rhodes home run a successful catch. So Dave had a pretty spectacular role in that World Series. Next is Jim Hegan, who is the catcher. And uh, Jim's got a career fielding average of 990, which is excellent for a catcher. Next is Bill Glenn, who uh, was a pinch hitter in the 10th inning. And unfortunately, he struck out, and this ended up being his second to last at bat in the major leagues. He did uh, play in game three, and that would have been his last at bat because he ended up retiring at the end of the next year. At least, I shouldn't say retired. He was uh, relegated to the minor leagues in 55 and spent three or four years there and then decided to retire in the late 50s. Next is somebody who didn't have to retire early. That's Bob Lemon, Hall of Fame pitcher. He had seven 20-game win seasons and had a terrific career, not only as a player, but very successful manage, managing career as well. And even though this gentleman wasn't in the starting lineup or get, get himself into the game, I thought everybody would get a kick out of seeing Don Mossy's rookie card. At least I think this is his rookie card. 
1955 tops. Next, we go to the Giants, and here's first baseman Whitey Lockman. And Whitey has a distinction. He was the youngest player to hit a home run. Uh, he was 18 years old in his major league uh, debut and hit a home run. And he actually also was uh, the tying run. He was on base and was on uh, the tying run in the famous 1951 shot heard around the world. He and Willie Mays were on base when Bobby Thompson hit that home run. Next is Al Dark, who was playing shortstop in this game. He found an interesting uh, statistic. Al finished his career with 2,094 uh, hits, and those numbers, uh, he had more hits in his career than either Phil Rizzuto or Pee Wee Reese. So the three New York-based shortstops, uh, Al Dark actually had more hits in his career. thought that was an interesting dynamic. And Al actually went on to manage the San Francisco Giants in the early 1960s. Here's Don Mueller, right fielder, who actually committed two errors in this game. But he, uh, he scored and uh, played a pivotal role. And during the season, he hit 342 to finish second behind Willie in the batting title. Next is Hank Thompson, who is a man of firsts. And... Uh, I was just really impressed with him. First, you know, he, he served in World War II, as, as so many of the players in this game did. And he was a machine gunner in the U.S. Army, and he fought in the Battle of the Bulge in late 1944, early 1945. He was the first black player uh, to play for the St. Louis Browns. And on August 9, 1947, uh, he played against Larry Doby, which would have been the first game where two black players on opposing teams played. And then uh, he was signed by the Giants in 1949, so he became the first black player to play in both leagues. And then uh, later became the first uh, player, uh, along with Monty Irvin, uh, to play for the Giants. And then he became the first hitter to uh, face a black pitcher in a Major League Baseball game. And that pitcher happened to be Don Newcomb of the Brooklyn Dodgers. All right, the next is the hero, aside from Willie Mays, walk-off home run, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty was a very mediocre fielder, so he was relegated to... Uh, playing in only 82 games, but he was a very, very effective pinch hitter. He had um, 15 home runs in the course of the 54 season and was obviously instrumental in, in winning this game, but he also uh, hit a home run in game three, I believe. Next is Davey Williams, and Davey went 0 for 4 in this game, but I'll give you a quick backstory on this. I, I, found that kind of fascinating as well. He was a victim of what you would call um, baseball retaliation. 1955, fast forward from the 54 series here, in 1955, uh, the Dodgers were playing the Giants and Sal Magley was pitching for the Giants and Sal was known as the Barber. And the reason why he got that nickname was that he would pitch oftentimes high and tight, and shave, shave the, the batter. And Sal apparently was was causing some issues with his pitching. The Dodgers uh, felt they needed to retaliate. And unfortunately, um, Jackie Robinson decided that the only way he could retaliate was to try and lay down a bunt. And he was hoping that Magley would field the bunt, and then Robinson would essentially run Magley over. Well, as it turned out, Robinson laid the bunt. Magley did not pursue the ball. Whitey Lockman, the first baseman, came in to take it and then threw to first base, and that was being covered by second baseman Davey Williams. Robinson just crashed into uh, Williams, and Williams suffered a severe back injury. He was able to complete the game, essentially completed the season, but he really never was the same, according to uh, several of the Giants players, and ended up retiring uh, early in the 1956 uh, season. Okay, next is uh, catcher Wes Westrom. 
very solid ball player. And as I mentioned earlier, he was on the cover of the very first Sports Illustrated. And he, he went on to be a very successful uh, coach, and I think he managed as well. And here's the pitcher. I just mentioned the barber, Sal Magley. And a couple more pitchers. Uh, this is Don Little, who served up the pitch to Dick Wurtz. And he was very proud of himself after, uh, after he, he pitched to Wurtz. Uh, the Giants uh, replaced Little with pitcher Marv Grissom. And as that transition was taking place on the mound, Little kind of commented, well, I got my man. And he was replaced by Marv, Griff, Marv, Griff, Marv Grissom. Sorry. And Marv ended up pitching uh, successfully in the inning, hold off uh, Indians rally, and then uh, went on to finish the game in the 10th inning and became a winning pitcher after uh, Dusty Rhodes hit the home run. Okay, now we'll move to a couple of other cards. You're probably wondering where the heck um, some of the key players in the game were. And I wanted to uh, save one of the Hall of Famers was Monty Irvin. I thought I had a 54 card of him, but for some reason I couldn't locate it. But this is Monty Irvin, his 1955 Tops, Hall of Famer, and somebody who really helped Willie Mays in the early stages of his career. And then, of course, we have to finish with Willie himself. Here's my modest example of Willie, 1954 Bowman. And I think it would be fitting to end with the catch. I want to thank everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And look forward to uh, seeing you down the road here. I'll be making more videos. Really appreciate your support. And any feedback you want to give, please let me know. I just want to try and improve and do the best I can to deliver the content you want to see and hear. Everybody take care. See you next time.